everyone. In this practice problem, I'm going to explore the maximization of total revenue, and I'm going to compare this to the outcome where the firm maximizes profit. So our question is, a monopolist faces the demand curve Q is equal to 120 minus P over two. The monopolist has a constant marginal cost equal to 60, and there are no fixed costs of production. If the monopolist maximizes their total revenue, how much will they produce? And what is the price that they will charge for each unit? How does this outcome compare to the case of profit maximization? So let's start with maximizing total revenue. And the approach that I'm going to take is to note that for any sloped demand curve, the corresponding total revenue curve looks like this. What we're looking for is for the quantity associated with the maximum or the peak of our total revenue function that we have here. The way to find this maximum is to find the turning point of our total revenue function where the slope is equal to zero. So if you follow the red lines that are indicating the slope of our total revenue function here as we increase quantity, you can see that the slope is increasing but getting flatter and then at the maximum here, the slope of the total revenue function is completely flat and it's equal to zero. And we call this a turning point because immediately after this point, the slope becomes negative and total revenue starts to decrease. Now the slope of the total revenue function is actually what we call our marginal revenue, which is the derivative of our total revenue function with respect to quantity. The marginal revenue function actually looks like this. So I do have another video that goes through all of the theory about why uh, the curves have the shapes that they do. I'll link to that in the description. For our purposes, the point is that the quantity which corresponds to maximizing total revenue is going to be where the slope of the total revenue function is equal to zero, and that corresponds to where our marginal revenue function is equal to zero too. So my strategy is to find my marginal revenue function and then set it equal to zero. So to find our marginal revenue, we need to look at our total revenue function and then take the derivative with respect to quantity. Now total revenue is equal to price times quantity. A really easy way to find the derivative that we need is to express total revenue in terms of only the variable quantity. The way I'm going to do this is to work with our demand curve until price is the subject, and then I'm going to substitute that in. So from our question, our demand is Q is equal to 120 minus P over two. So I'm going to start by taking away 120 from both sides, and I'm left with Q minus 120 is equal to negative P over two. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative two, and I get negative two Q plus 240, just opening out the brackets here, is equal to P. Those negative twos uh, will cancel out on the denominator and the numerator. Rearranging, I get P is equal to 240 minus two Q. Substituting this into my total revenue function, I get total revenue is equal to P, well, P is equal to 240 minus two Q, and that's all multiplied by Q. Opening out these brackets, we get total revenue is equal to 240 Q minus two times Q squared. The derivative of this will be our marginal revenue, and I'll just do that back up here. We would get 240 minus four Q. So I do have a video on taking derivatives that I'll link to below if that move was confusing for you. Now recall that the condition that we want is the point at which marginal revenue is equal to zero. Substituting in 240 minus 4Q for marginal revenue, we get our condition here. Adding 4Q to both sides, we get 240 is equal to 4Q. And dividing both sides by four, we get Q is equal to 240 over four, which is equal to 60. What I have isolated is the quantity that maximizes total revenue, and that's actually equal to 60. And I'm going to show that on our diagram to the right here. To find our price, we're going to look back to our demand curve. 
I'm going to use the form of my demand curve, which is expressed with price as the subject because it's just easier. This is actually called the inverse demand curve. So I get P is equal to 240 minus two times, well, 60, which is 240 minus 120, so it's 120. And I can put all of that on my diagram here. So if we were maximizing total revenue, we would sell 60 units for $120 each. So just before I move on to the profit maximization case, I am going to say one more thing. The point that maximizes total revenue actually corresponds to the midpoint of the demand curve. And if we had drawn out the demand curve in detail, we would have found that the axis intercepts were actually equal to these numbers here. And so you can note that the price and quantity that we found that maximized total revenue corresponds to the point that's actually halfway between those intercepts and our origin. So that's our midpoint of our demand. So that's actually the shortcut way of maximizing total revenue. All right, so let's compare this result with the case of profit maximization. And I've kept my inverse demand curve and my marginal revenue function on the right here because I will need these again. So in order to maximize profit, the monopolist sets its quantity such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Now I'm going to substitute here, marginal revenue is 240 minus 4Q, we found that before, and 60 is our marginal cost, and we just got that from the question. So I'm going to solve for Q now. Taking away 240 from both sides, we get negative 4Q is equal to negative 180, so our Q is equal to 45. I'm going to call that Q star. This is our profit maximizing quantity. Graphically, the point is here. So if I, if I draw in my marginal cost curve, which is a straight line because marginal cost is constant, it's the quantity associated with the intersection here between marginal revenue and marginal cost. Again, we can use our inverse demand curve to find our price. So P is equal to 240 minus two times 45, which is equal to, well, 150. So if we wanted to maximize our profit, we would sell 45 units at $150 each. Graphically, that looks like this. In order to compare our two outcomes, I'm going to compare the profit in either case. So profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost in both cases. Now total revenue is equal to price times quantity in both cases too. In the case where I'm maximizing total revenue, this is equal to 120 times 60, which is equal to 7,200. In our profit maximization case, this is equal to 150, that was our price, times 45, that was our quantity, which is all equal to 6,750. Now our total cost, we can actually gauge from the question. In particular, note that we don't have any fixed costs, so we don't have to worry about that. And our marginal cost is constant and equal to 60. So the total cost will just be the quantity that the firm produces multiplied by the cost of producing each unit, which is the marginal cost, which is equal to 60. So it will be Q times 60. In our case of maximizing total revenue, our quantity is equal to 60. So our total cost is 60 times 60, which is 3,600. In our case of maximizing profit, our quantity is 45. So total cost is 45 times 60, which is 2,700. Once we take the difference in both cases, we see that the profit when we maximize total revenue is equal to 7,200 minus 3,600, which is 3,600. When we maximize profit, it's 6,750 minus 2,700, which is equal to 4,050. Before I finish, I'm just going to look at this visually on our diagram. And what we can do is actually put our total cost function on the bottom diagram here. Now we said the total cost was equal to marginal cost times Q. Now this function actually looks like this. Our total cost increases at a constant rate because as we add a new quantity, our total cost increases by the same amount 
So it's a straight line and the slope is actually equal to 60. Now on this diagram, if we look at the vertical distance between total revenue and total cost, you can see that the case of profit maximization is going to lead to the maximum possible difference between these two functions. And that difference is profit. Linking this back to our profit maximization condition of setting quantity such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, this point is actually where the slopes of our two functions are equal. If we compare this to the case of total revenue maximization, the gap between the two functions is smaller and hence our profit is smaller. Essentially, even though revenue is larger at this point, a greater proportion of that revenue goes to costs and the monopolist would do better to raise the price, produce a little less and go for that profit maximization outcome of Q star is equal to 45. And that's it. That's the practice problem uh, for this week. I hope that it helped. There's a few interesting points here. Um, and I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out my other videos uh, and have a great day or night.